In response to the pressure, they have announced that they intend to start processing visa applications at embassies and consulates in a tiered approach, prioritized in the following order. I have some exciting immigration news for you today. Last week, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus officially endorsed a bill that could grant a pathway to citizenship for more than 5 million undocumented workers. In addition, Democratic lawmakers released a bill designed to expand healthcare access to immigrants with the unified backing of hundreds of private organizations. And finally, the Department of State has publicly recognized the U.S. visa backlog and outline their plans to start addressing it. We will discuss all the details right now. Make sure you stay tuned until the end to see how this immigration news can potentially impact your case. Also, please make sure to like this video so that others on YouTube get a chance to see it. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification setting so that you're notified every single time I release a new video and to join me when I go live. Okay, so what is the new citizenship bill and what is it getting attention for? Last week, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus officially endorsed the Citizenship for Essential Workers Act, which will provide a path to citizenship for more than 5 million undocumented workers who were deemed essential employees during the pandemic. Passing the bill would mean each of these undocumented individuals would receive an adjustment of status to legal permanent resident so long as they have been working in one of the essential industries, which include healthcare, agriculture, construction, hospitality, and 15 others. In addition, the proposed bill would repeal the three-year bar and the 10-year bar for re-entry into the U.S. in order to keep immigrant families together. Now, this sounds great, but what is the actual likelihood of this passing? If you've been following my channel, you know that it's in addition to Biden's U.S. Citizenship Act of 2021, there are two other bills in Congress that focus on giving undocumented immigrants the right to live and work in the United States. The Dream and the Promise Act and the Farm Workforce Modernization Act, both of which have passed the House and are waiting for confirmation by the Senate. Between these three bills, not one of these bills has enough Senate Republican support to overcome a filibuster. So the hope is that they find their way into a larger infrastructure or jobs package so that they can be passed through budget reconciliation. This would avoid the filibuster's 60 vote threshold. Democratic lawmakers also introduced a separate bill last week designed to make healthcare coverage more easily accessible to all immigrants. The legislation is called HEAL for Immigrant Families Act and is already backed by more than 80 lawmakers. It also has a long line of support from advocacy, immigration rights, and healthcare groups. If passed, the bill would lift a five-year waiting period before legal immigrants can enroll in Medicaid and the Children's Health Insurance Program, expand access to various types of healthcare coverage for DACA recipients, and remove restrictions that prevent undocumented immigrants from purchasing health insurance on the Affordable Care Act marketplace. Just a few of the hundreds of groups that have shown their support for this bill include the National Immigration Law Center, the Planned Parenthood Federation of America, and the American Public Health Association. According to a Kaiser Family Foundation report, non-citizens in the U.S. are more likely to be uninsured. And as we just discussed, they are also more likely to be disproportionately affected by the pandemic and unable to receive the care that they need. So again, the big question is, how likely is this bill to pass the Senate? The Heal for Immigrant Families Act was first proposed in the House back in 2015 without the same level of support that it has today. So it has a better chance of passing now than it did during the Trump administration. Despite that fact, it still does not have any Republican support and it will likely only become law if it is included as part of a broader legislative package. Fortunately, there is no shortage of immigration policy being pushed by Democratic lawmakers and the pressure is mounting on Congress and the Biden administration to make immigration reform happen. If you would like to learn more about either of the bills we have just discussed, I will include links to both in the description below.
Finally, what news do we have of the U.S. visa backlog and consulates around the world? The Department of State has released a public statement recognizing the visa backlog that exploded during the pandemic. They also explained how they are currently prioritizing immigrant visas abroad and what you can expect in the coming months. For those who don't know, a buildup of visa applications started when the Trump administration implemented policies designed to discourage legal immigration. Then the pandemic hit in 2020 and embassies and consulates abroad were forced to shutter as a result. The number of pending family preference visa applications skyrocketed from 26,000 to nearly 285,000, a nearly 10 times increase in just 12 months. Pressure has been mounting for the State Department to take action in order to prevent this backlog from delaying visas for the rest of the decade. In response to the pressure, they have announced that they intend to start processing visa applications at embassies and consulates in a tiered approach, prioritized in the following order. Tier one, immediate relative intercountry adoption visas, age out cases, and special immigrant visas. Tier two, immediate relative visas, fiance visas, and returning resident visas. Tier three, family preference immigrant visas and SE special immigrant visas for certain employees of the U.S. government abroad. Tier four, all other immigrant visas, including employment preference and diversity visas. The U.S. government's immigration priority is family reunification, which is why the Department of State is prioritizing immediate relative and K-1 fiancé visas. Note that this prioritization plan still instructs posts to schedule and adjudicate some cases in Tier 3 and Tier 4 each month, so don't worry that progress will not be made in these categories. Also, keep in mind that the volume and type of visa cases that each post processes will be determined by local conditions. So it's important to check the website of each consulate in order to get more details. I will include a link in the description below of each U.S. embassy and the Department of State's original announcement for those who want to learn more. So has your case been affected by the visa backlog? Leave me a comment and let me know. And also make sure to watch this video to see how this backlog started, what the Department of State is doing and the impact it is having on people all over the world. I will be releasing a new video on this topic as more immigration news becomes available. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do so now. Check out this video. I'll see you there.